during the polar night, you get used to walking out your door to the calming and thick darkness of the endless night. Sometimes you are welcomed by the green dancing aurora or a bright full moon, but today was very different. The sky was suddenly colorful. A hint of pink was growing from the horizon. I wondered for a moment if I had gone mad, <laughs> but then I realized what it was that I was looking at. This is absolutely incredible. It doesn't even look real. So this is stratosphere. No, it's a Rayleigh scattering. That's what it is. So it really, oh, if you're wondering why I'm red, it's the brake lights from my car. <laughs> but so Rayleigh scattering is that light from the mainland and only the red particles of the sun rays they reflect with something in the atmosphere with ice crystals, I think, and it sends us the red light up here all the way north, which then turns into sometimes pinkish skies or red skies. And there's absolutely no wind. This is just incredibly beautiful. Today is absolutely incredible. We're gonna head home soon and I'm gonna have a Q&A, but before I just need to show you like this video. We have some Rayleigh scattering to the left and we have a full moon to the right and we have beautiful mountains behind us and we've got the Big Dipper in front of us. This is just absolutely incredible. Like, what? I don't know. I don't even know how to explain the amazingness of this all. Harigun! Wow.
mår du? Var det bra? Jag tar det. That's a lot nicer, isn't it? How incredible was that start to this day? And like, this was all today. I just came home from the village because I just got my nails done. See? Yay! I went for a nice red this time. So I just got my nails done and when I walked out this morning, I saw that the sky's a bit pink is this Rayleigh scattering again? And I'm like, it must be. And then I went into the village and there it was a lot more. So after I got my nails done, I bought a coffee and a sandwich and I drove to my favorite spot, which is where I brought you guys. And I was there for maybe what, one or two hours and just stood outside and just looked at it and took photos and I filmed a bit. And I just, I literally just gasped at what our world up here looks like sometimes. It was, absolutely gorgeous. So today I am doing a Q&A and I asked for questions on YouTube and I think I got so far like 600 questions. 600 questions today is going to be a little bit too many. Now I've done a few Q&As before and Christopher has been with me, but today I'm just doing one on my own because it's been a while. So I'm gonna try my best not to repeat questions, but also I've had so many new people join the channel lately during this Christmas. So I might have to repeat kind of like the basic ones and I'm gonna try to do some shorter answers to get more questions in there. So if I don't answer your question today, I'm sorry there were so many, but I'm gonna do my best and give you a mix of Svalbard, a mix of questions about my life, and let's just see what we've got. Before we continue in the video, just a quick little break because NordVPN are back sponsoring another video. If you go to nordvpn.com slash Cecilia or just click the link in the description, you get a two year plan with a bonus gift on top. It is a new year and the perfect time to talk about cybersecurity. So let's start with lesson one, man in the middle attack. Let's say you want to surf the web at your local cafe. So you connect to the cafe free Wi-Fi network without thinking much about it, but it's a trap. It's a fake network set up as part of an evil twin man in the middle attack. While you're browsing, criminals can harvest any sensitive data that you enter. You see, Wi-Fi networks, especially free public Wi-Fi, can be compromised by criminals in order to intercept your data, which lets them spy on your data as well as alter it. The solution to this is to encrypt your online traffic with NordVPN at all times by just the click of a button. So just head to the link in the description to grab that exclusive deal. It's all risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. And thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring another video and let's head right back into it. When are the best times to visit as a tourist? What time of the year is best to experience polar night and the Northern Lights? Steven, thank you, Steven. Um, the seasons are very different, so it depends on what you want to do. And uh, my main thing that I say is that if you want really cold polar nights, but just coming out of the polar night, you go for February. That's when you have the pastel winter. It's gonna be pink and blue and crispy. March is gonna be super cold as well. Perfect for snowmobiling. Maybe a little bit cold for a lot of people. So if you wanna come here and do snowmobiling and see glaciers and polar bears during winter, I would say April, that's your golden month. That's also very booked up like a year in advance. So that's something you're gonna need to plan. Then you have the summer. I would not come here in May or June because it's in between months. So it's neither summer nor winter. And you don't really know what activities you're gonna be able to do. It might be too cold for boating or it might be too warm for snowmobiling. So summer for me would be July, September, August, August, September. Uh, incredible months. 
absolutely incredible. You can do fjord safaris, you can see glacier fronts up close, you can go see polar bears often. One rule up here is that there's never ever going to be a guaranteed polar bear tour because it's it's illegal to seek out a polar bear, but if you cover a lot of ground in a trip, there is a chance you will see one. That's kind of the way it is, especially in the summer, because it's a lot easier to be out on the ocean and look into the shore and maybe spot a polar bear. So I would say for polar bear sightings, go on a cruise, not a cruise, go on a boat trip in the summer. For Northern Lights, I would say October has actually been an incredible month, uh, two years in a row for me when it comes to Northern Lights. The weather is clear, it gets dark, but it's also daytime. And you can get like quite a lot of Northern Lights, but everything depends on solar storms. So that's what Northern Lights is. It's a stor storm from the sun that comes down and reacts with particles in our earth. So it depends. But another good polar, another good Northern Lights month is February and sometimes March. Both those are good, because then you have a bit of day and night. Uh, I wouldn't say January, December or November, mainly because it can be very snowy and very stormy. And if you don't have clear skies, you're not gonna see any of the Northern Lights, so. What are the crime rates? Is there a jail, prison? How long do you have to wait for emergency services to attend? Great question. So we have a police force, uh, which is called Sysselmestern. We also have the, all the other you know, emergency services that you would need. We have a hospital. We have an ambulance helicopter if you're out in the field and you need to get picked up. We also have a fire brigade. And what's interesting about that is that it's equipped for a village of 30,000 people. And we're only 2,400 people here. And why it's equipped like that is because um, we are so remote and if anything would happen, we would be in a very bad situation and couldn't get any help. So they need to be prepared for a lot more because there's no help to get. So I think that's really interesting. Other than that, I mean, we don't have a jail. We have a holding cell, I know. Uh, if you do get jail time for some reason, you will do your jail time on the mainland. When it comes to the crime rate in our village, it's very low. Most people don't lock their houses or their cars, and I've never felt safer walking the streets than here. The majority of the criminal cases reported each year are petty theft or criminal damage. Environmental crime is also a high priority. You are welcome back as long as it's not a super serious crime. So after you've done your jail time, you just come back, I guess. <laughs> Can you start interviewing more townspeople in your videos? So I started with a series like the first thing I did called Meet the Locals, and I did one episode with our jeweler, and I loved doing that, but I also realized that it's a lot more difficult to film videos with other people. So I just kind of didn't continue on that straight away because I started so many other different projects and I wanted to do so many other kinds of videos, but I wanna pick that one up. The thing is, I just need to plan that one a lot more. You need to also, you know, filming people, I'm used to it now, but other people aren't used to being on camera. So it's kind of like you have to kind of coach them into it and, you know, prepare them in a different way than I would if I pick up my camera. You also need to make sure that they're okay with whatever you put out. You need to get approval. So there's a lot more that goes into that, but I think that's what I want to focus on a little bit this year and do some meet the locals, at least a couple. I can happily tell you that by the time I'm editing this, I have booked a filming day with Arvidas, where we will follow along him and his family on a regular day in Longyearbyen. So exciting. So meet the locals, we'll be back sooner than later. So I will definitely start doing a bunch of those, but it might take a little time because I need to plan them completely different. Also, now that my channel's a lot bigger than it was before, I feel like I you know, I want a different production value, but also I just want people to be comfortable with whatever I put out. Because it's okay when it's me and my face and people comment about me on my channel, you know, that's, that's fine. But it's a very big different thing to put other people on your channel and subject them to that. So, you know, that's what I need to think about. But I am planning to continue that series. There's one video in there so far. <laughs> Oh, love this. What is the most amazing weather phenomenon, phenomenon that you've ever seen on Svalbard? Without a doubt, what we saw today, Rayleigh scattering. 
this we've had before. Last year we had like the craziest show of Rayleigh scattering, which is when our sky turns pink like today. So it is, like I said at the beginning, it's sun rays, the lights, the, the red spectrum of the sun rays that come towards the main. <laughs> okay, so it's the scattering of light and the red light of the sun rays hits and reflects against particles in the air. I think it's specifically ice just between the mainland and us sending us the red light from the sun up here because the sun doesn't reach us, but it's reflecting the red spectrum of that light and sending that up north to Svalbard. So we just get like a horizon of pink. So imagine the sun is down here. The lights don't reach us, but just like before it doesn't reach us, the red particles are, you know, uh, reflecting against ice in the atmosphere and just continuing to send just the red. How crazy. Absolutely without a doubt the craziest thing I've seen. Uh, the only thing I want to see that I haven't seen in terms of weather phenomena is stratos stratospheric clouds. This is kind of the same thing as this, but it's different. It's like holographic clouds. That's what I want to see. Uh, that's on my list. Like I, like, I don't know how or when, I think it's just chance. Okay. How do you keep your car battery from dying? Which is actually a question I get all the time as well. So I drive a Toyota Hilux, which is a very regular car up here. Uh, most cars, well, all cars are of course imported from the mainland, but some people buy them at the car buyer place, at the dealers, Toyota dealers. We have one here on the island. But that's of course extremely expensive because it's Norway. So I bought my car in Sweden and I drove it to Northern Norway and then we shipped it up to Svalbard. And it has two batteries, uh, so it works extremely well in the cold, it always starts. Uh, I've never had any issues and that's really it. So a Toyota uh, Hilux is very good, <laughs> but also just regular, like if you live in the village, you would keep your car uh, plugged in for heat, but since we live out here, we don't have access to it. It's too far down to our cabin. So, but I never had any issues. It's a Toyota Hilux. It has two batteries. It's a diesel. So it just starts in any weather, which is great. Would you want more furry babies as Grim or just one dog? Christopher is very much against having more than one dog at the same time. Um, but at the same time, I don't really want one more dog at the moment. I feel like Grim is perfect just having one. Having two dogs is so much. And I think when you just have two, you might as well have 10. That's my thinking. But, oh, he's here. But we will have one dog until Grim is older. Uh, and then we'll decide what we're gonna do. But I'm thinking definitely that when he is, you know, moving on over the rainbow bridge, that we would get another Lapun from the same breeder with the same kind of mentality as Grim, a derp. We might even have your babies, Grim. That would be ideal. Like, but then I would need to do, I need to do so much to get his babies. I need to bring him to the mainland. I need to put them out, you know, give him to the breeder and you know. Imagine having babies off of Grim. Come da, ya yeah, come. Come to me. Yeah, come down. Come. Oh, so flink. Yeah, come. Hey, you all. Come here. Come. Hi. Hey, my baby boy. I have seen it on sick day. How are you? Oh. Oh, you're so fin. How's it going? Oh, you're so fin. Oi, 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 oi. Is this for you? Sit. Nah. That's a good flink. Can you tell us what camera you started with and your progression in gear from hobbyist to professional content creator? Ooh, I love this question because it's happened quite quickly for me that I've gone from like super beginner to where I am now. I think that happened in what, like four years? For me, at least, I felt like that went pretty quickly. I first started with an Olympus camera. I, I only bought a drone first, didn't own a camera at all for a really long time. 
Then I bought a camera because I thought this is so much fun. You know, photography is really exciting. Let me try, you know, with a real camera because I was just using my phone before that. So I bought an Olympus and I think the whole set maybe cost like 800 bucks or something, which I thought was super expensive, you know, and that was the camera body and the lens. So I felt like that was, I mean, it is expensive, but in the camera world, it's nothing. But so that was a really good first time investment to know that like, do I want to keep doing this? Do I think this is fun? And my main tip there is buy something that has interchangeable lenses. So don't buy a full camera body with a lens, like that's one because then you can never really upgrade it in the beginning. So I bought that one and if I look back at my photos now, I kind of laugh, but I also love it because it shows like what a difference it makes when you work on your trade or your craft for a while, like where you can get. So I started doing my Northern Lights photos and looking at them now, I remember just how freaking proud I was over those photos. And now like the photos I take now are so much better but that's because I have four years of knowledge and a camera that cost, I think this one cost like $5,000, just the camera body. And you know, there's not a chance in hell that I would have bought that in the beginning. But so I've gone from, I did three steps to get here actually. So I did the Olympus camera from the beginning, which was about 800 bucks for the whole thing. Then I went and bought a Sony a7 III. That was a big investment for me. That was like the jump to the next one when I realized, okay, I can do this for a job, but I'm gonna need a lot better equipment because I can't, I can't do any professional jobs on the other one. I couldn't really, because it didn't have the specs that it needed to, you know, film 4K and things. So I bought the Sony a7 III, an incredible camera, absolutely amazing. The only thing though, it doesn't have a flip out screen. So I can't really see anything when I film, but it was really, really good in the beginning for taking photos and for doing the jobs that I did because I started off doing some uh, videography jobs for the village and that's kind of before I did social media. I started doing odd jobs in the village when it was photography and videography, which is absolutely terrible for mental health. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's because I was so new to it as well, but I've never been more stressed than having to do these jobs because it was just so scary. You have so much pressure and, you know, I don't know, it was so much fun. I learned more than I could have ever done. I think that job that I took was my first big crash course in what videography is. And that's when I figured out everything. Like, how do I edit? What do I do? Like, how do I even, like, how does this work? That came from doing one job that entailed like 12 different videos as my first videography job. So yeah, definitely just go for it, but also like it's gonna be scary and terrible, but you will learn so much. But so I went from Olympus to Sony a7 III, which I think the camera body cost 2,500. And then I bought a lens on top of that. Then I added a camera to that and I bought the Sony a7C, cause I need two. I very often need two cameras for two angles. It's incredibly useful, but then I, realized that I need 4K in 60 FPS. I need to be able to have 4K and slow down the footage and have slow-mo. Slow motion is the best thing I know. I think it's beautiful. And my other cameras didn't support that. So I needed to upgrade as, like eventually. So I decided to sell the Sony a7 III. I sold it to Lynn actually. And I bought the Sony a7S III, which that's the investments that you kind of have to make when you want to up your quality. And the quality that comes from this camera is absolutely insane. And the difference that I see and also the different things I can do with it. So I'm very happy. I think I'm gonna stay on this camera level for quite a while, cause you can always make an upgrade. There will never be, you know, you, you can continue to buy things and it will never be enough, if you know what I mean. So if I just tell myself that, no, 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 this one is perfect. It has everything that I need for now. <laughs> yeah, I just, how I went from hobbyist to professional, literally just with like taking a few odd jobs and spending an insane amount of time on YouTube looking at tutorials. I also studied a lot of people's work. Like I looked at so many videos and like what they looked like and what kind of songs made you feel different ways. Like, you know, you know, you just have to watch a lot of content and also find your style. And I just kind of like went with it. I think that was everything for today.
I answered a lot of questions and I will definitely go back and do another Q&A and answer more. But thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I think it was fun to do a sit down video in between all of the kind of daily adventures of Polar Night. Just sit down and chat to you guys. Um, thank you so much for being here. Subscribe if you're new. Maybe turn on notifications if you want to get notifications on when I post. Head to our Patreon if you want to check that out. Head to our Patreon to see more content from us. I just recently posted two videos uh, called my Portugal Diaries. So if you want to check those out, just link in the description. Okay, bye. And thank you so much for being here. Bye.